In this quick CSS tip, we're going to look at the CSS mask property. Down in the description, there's the link to the live code you can edit on Scrimba. In this CSS tip, we're going to be looking at CSS masks. Now this is a fairly simple CSS property, but browser support isn't that great. So we're going to have to use CSS prefixes for WebKit. Now to just illustrate this, I've just got a simple div, right? Called container. And then I have one image sitting in the, in the middle. So if we come over here and hit the preview button, this is what we uh, sort of get. Just this little image that comes over here randomly from the Unsplash API. Now, uh, what we'll do here is let's say I want to use, I only want a, a specific portion of this image to appear. We can use what's known as a mask. Now a mask is basically an alpha channel. So it's a black and white image that can be created in any, any software program. This is similar to like a Photoshop mask or masks in any program really. But the key difference between a clip mask, which is what we looked at in the past video, in the previous video, and a CSS mask, is CSS masks are raster-based images, where clip paths are vector-based images. So the benefit of using a CSS mask instead of a clip path is you can have semi-transparency, you can have uh, all sorts of interesting effects because it's raster, uh, you know, just a standard 8-bit mask. So let's go ahead and take a look. So we're going to come over here to the CSS sheet and we're just going to add the very first rule here. And again, it depends on your web browser if this will be supported. So the property we're going to look at is called mask-image. Okay, that's the CSS property name. And then you just simply specify a URL to an image, much like you would do for a background image. Now I've got this little images folder and I have this PNG that's called mask.image right here. So this is the file that I'm going to be using in the sample. So I'll simply reference my images folder and then mask-image.png, just like so. Now, when I refresh over here, you can see nothing is happening. And that is because almost all of the browsers require this property to be used with a prefix. So I have to say dash webkit dash mask image. And you can see as soon as I add that prefix in, maybe you can't see it on your browser. But when I refresh over here, sure enough, now I'm getting that mask image is this outer shape. You can see it kind of looks like maybe some paint strokes uh, through there with these rough edges along the edge. And that is the way it works. So you can see it behaves very similarly to a background image, meaning it repeats by default. So you can see it's repeating from left to right. I can adjust the size and width and height and position and a few things like that. So just to illustrate a couple of those, we're just going to say mask whoops, mask dash um, position. And we'll just say top left for now. Okay. And again, every one of these properties, I'm going to have to copy and paste with the dash WebKit prefix. So there's a mask position. You can uh, mess around with the mask position there. And let's go ahead and look at a couple of other ones. We have one called mask repeat. So this is mask dash repeat. And I can say no dash repeat. And this should look very similar to the, whoops, not dash mask repeat, mask repeat. Very similar to the background property, dash WebKit. And you can see as soon as I add that one over here and refresh, now I've only got one single image because the repeating is no longer happening. And then lastly, we'll just do one more, which is the mask dash size. So I'll set this to 250 pixels by 250 pixels. And then we'll copy and paste this to add in our WebKit prefix. And you can see, sure enough, the size changes, right? Or I can even go larger. So we'll say 350, 350, or 400, 450, 450. And anyway, we can adjust the size. So all those properties that work in the background image, most of those work on the CSS mask property but you do need that prefix. But with this effect, you can create some really cool graphics and layer elements just like you would in a, you know, a raster-based program like Adobe Photoshop.